everyone, I'm Dr. Christina with New Leaf Chiropractic. I have a special guest today. This is Dr. Ben. Today we're going to be talking about pelvic floor. Dr. Ben has had extensive experience with his patients with uh, focusing on and strengthening the pelvic floor. So he's our guest today. He's going to be taking us through some exercises and giving us some information on um, you know, getting our pelvic floor stronger. So your pelvic floor are muscles, are the group of muscles that support your pelvic organs. So in men, this is gonna be your bowel and bladder organs. In women, this is going to be bowel, bladder, and uterus. So Dr. Ben, can you tell us why pelvic floor strength is so important? It's very important for several reasons, mainly because it's part of your core. This is how I generally approach the pelvic floor and strengthening and developing stability with the pelvic floor is making, using it as a piece of the core system. You have your diaphragm and your pelvic floor, those are your two most important in that system, and you gotta get them to work against each other to create that pressure, to create that stability. And here's some three exercises I like to go through. Perfect, so I'm gonna just step out of the frame and let Dr. Ben take over. Um, this is a perfect time to take notes, and these are really easy exercises you can do at home. So the first of these three exercises, keeping them as simple as possible, this one's called a wall bug. It's a variant of another exercise you might have seen. But first off, you want to be on the ground with your head near the wall. You're going to have your hands on the wall directly overhead in a comfortable position. Three points to remember here about this exercise is one, you want to have your fingers as long as possible pressing into the wall. If you're cheating and you kind of curl them up, that's not going to get the right activation. So you want them as long as possible so that you can't lift them off the wall if someone came here and grabbed these. Second thing is you want to have your lips to be very relaxed. If you're clenching your lips closed and holding your breath, you're not going to get proper diaphragm activation and you're not going to get proper pelvic floor activation as a result. And we're just trying to use these exercises to get them all to work together as a unit. Third thing to remember is to keep your low back into the floor. You don't want to arch your low back. That's another way to cheat and you won't have a good stabilization of your core when you're doing this exercise. So one, two, three, kind of run through them through your head, fingers, relaxed lips, low back in, lift the legs up into a 90, 90 position, even 90 of the toes. There you go. Once you have this and you're breathing, relax your lips, kind of keep them open a little bit. Just let one leg go down towards the floor and all the way up. And then the other leg down towards the floor, all the way up. You'll know it's really working when you kind of feel your whole torso vibrate a little bit. That means you're using all of the muscles. Second exercise, we're going to transition to that, is a variation of a plank. If you could hand him the... Thank you. Protect his elbows a little bit. And torso the wall a little bit. And frame still cut. Torso that way. Go to the wall. There you go. So we have your standard plank here. However, to make sure you're using your core correctly and not cheating, just a little bit of extra stimulus. This is just a slide for furniture. Sticky side, slippery side. You put the slippery side on the low back here. And now it forces him to keep a good core activation, not letting the ribs fall forward or the low back arch into a position. And then if you want to add a little bit of extra stimulus to this, you can shift from one elbow to another, just kind of lifting it off the ground. Good and good. And something to point out. You don't want to shove your arms into the ground and overactivate your pecs. That's kind of cheating. You want to keep your back activated. Keep this pressed up. If you want to make it a little more difficult, you can transition from a plank position to a push-up position. Keeping that sliding, there you go. And then you can go up and down however you want. And then the final transition I tend to use is in the push-up position. One more, come on, there you go. And then you just kind of take one hand, tap it up to your pec, and it's a really nice spot to check to make sure you're not overactivating your pec, and shift. Ideally, you want to go as slow as possible. Slow as control, slow as stability. And the final exercise for you here, we're going to shift to a quadruped position. Just all fours. And this is another really simple one. Again, slippery side down. Up here a little bit, up here a little bit, you're sagging, there you go. And all you do with this one, quadruped, hands underneath shoulders, 
knees underneath hips. You just lift the knees off the ground a few inches and that's it. Holding this position is another great way to get some core stability. And then you can play around with variations of this. You can try lifting a hand if you want. Slowly is the key. If you're doing it fast, you're using compensation muscles and you're cheating. You wanna do it as slow and as controlled as possible. Another way to make this a little more difficult or add outside stimulus is you can start pushing a little. If you have a partner, one side, other side. You can even make it a dual exercise and have somebody fully on here doing their own kind of plank. And that's it. Those are my three exercises that I tend to use the most to get some core activation and pelvic floor stability. Yes, you can relax and breathe. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Ben. These are great. Some of these are exercises that I used to get my core and pelvic floor back in shape after um, having babies. So. Yes, they're great exercises for that. They're great exercises to use before, during, and after a pregnancy as well. Awesome. So we'd love to hear from you in our comments. Try these exercises out at home and um, just let us know how, how they've helped you. How consistent would someone need to do be um, with doing these? Uh, in terms of reps of sets a day, I do two or three a day, but in terms of reps per set, to fatigue, and that is until you're shaking uncontrollably. If you can't get the right stability, if you can't even activate the muscles, you're obviously overworking them at that point. Rest, wait till the next set. So up to 10 is usually what I tell people. It can be as low as two if that's all you can do correctly. The key part is doing this correctly and not cheating. If you can't keep that uh, furniture mover on your back, or a yoga block is another good uh, alternative, if you can't keep that balanced on your back, then you obviously have exhausted your stability. Awesome. Try these out. Let us know how they go, how they've gone for you. And thanks again for listening.